Welcome to the Dear Entitled Radio Show with your hosts Nick Beardsley and Javi Mello. What's going on, everyone? I'm Nick Beardsley, and this is my co-host Javi Mello, and you're listening to Dear Untitled Radio. Today on Dear Untitled Radio, we have the privilege of chatting with special guest Harvey Freeman, whom some of you know best as a vocalist of the rising UK-based new metal project, Graphic Nature. 2019 found Graphic Nature front and center in the UK scene at launch, where they found quite a amount of su- success with a handful of singles. In between, they signed to a great label, uh, and in 2022, it saw them release two EPs, Killing Floor and New Skin, across the year. So, Harvey, we're stoked to have you on. Thanks for coming on today. All good. Good to be here. It's fun. Happy we could coordinate it. Uh, so, absolutely nothing can stop the graphic nature machine, it seems. <laughs> when, <Yeah. laughs> when, when you and the guys started the project... Did you ever envision that you'd be where you were today in this amount of time, even through a pandemic? Oh, I still see us as a small band. I still think we're completely irrelevant. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. It, it's probably it's, better uh, to maintain that mindset. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing because, like, I, I we get a lot of people now saying, like, oh, you guys are fucking doing bits. And I'm like, are we? Like... Yeah, the Instagram might look kind of cool, but I'm sat at home watching The Mandalorian. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I love it. No, it's, 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 it's going well um, in that sense of things. It's, it's weird. I don't really... I've never been good with, like, compliments in general. So when people are like, your band's sick, and I'm like, all right, cool. So who's paid you off to say this? Like, what's yeah. going on? What, uh, what has my manager put you up to? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't trust a lot of you. That's a good mentality to have, though. Yeah, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, it's it's quite um, it's quite bad in the sense because I'm always like, never feeling like someone's genuine when they're trying to compliment something that we've worked so hard on. So, it's like a, I don't know, two way mirror, double edged sword or whatever. It's always I do know the feeling. Yeah, Mm. It, it always feels to me in that regard of like a almost imposter syndrome like i'm not good enough to be getting this praise and yeah 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 absolutely but i mean you you are the voice behind graphic nature so even mm. even more so you know being the front man being the focus to an extent um yeah <laughs> that's 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 one mindset to go into it um yeah so if people don't know graphic nature um mm-hmm. they obviously need to go check you out yeah. but you're aesthetic we've talked about it in the past on the other podcast we had done um it, it's bold yet secretive so that fans mm-hmm. can focus on the music and not necessarily the members is that yeah. still the driving point um not necessarily now it's still very much in the the same ethos if that's the correct word but it's now it's not so much of a focus on like hiding anything like it never really was at the start we just didn't like showing our faces that much because you know we're not a pretty bunch of men we're just men Stop <laughs> like, it. you know Stop it. so it was more of like okay cool if they don't really see what we look like anyway it's fine because if the music does the talking for us then it's cool mm. um but now we're yeah i mean we're not like showing our faces all the time because that's not the aesthetic but you know we're not denying that we're in the band it's not like a sleep token thing where no one knows who anyone is right my hair's just always in front of my face and maybe that helps me not getting stopped on the street if I ever get famous. So there you go. It's a good, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Walk around like, uh, I don't know, like cousin it on the street and maybe then people will recognize. Then people him. will know. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Ah, oh, dude, it's, it's like Superman with the glasses. Yeah. I'll just take the glasses off. Then I fuck a Superman. <laughs> I'm back on. Oh no, wait, it's Joe, man. <laughs> Wrong guy. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're new metal based. Um, that, that's, mm-hmm your your forte there your music is what some might refer to as extreme obviously not in the metal communities because they're they're a little more familiar with the genre but um i i have to say the numbers don't lie if people are saying you're extreme because i want to say congratulations on hitting a mass amount of views on killing floor video that's awesome. I don't know how that happened or why it happened. And I'm putting it down. Me and Charlie, right? Charlie plays bass in Graphic Nature. We've put it down to having the same song name as a video game. 
So it just comes up when people are looking for this video game. They're like, oh, shit. Is this the new like song for Killing Floor or whatever? So they right. click onto it and then they're either like, this is fucking shit. Or they're like, oh, wow, I've just found these guys out. This is fucking awesome. That... I think it's down to that because when we release another song, it's only it's you know it's not going to do anywhere near as good. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. Oh my goodness! It, it was <laughs> what I think two hundred thousand views that you you got, which is astronomical. Yeah, it's um, we once it got to a hundred, I was like, okay, this is really cool, and then it got to two hundred, and it's still going now, and I'm like, it's fine. Like, stop because I don't want to look bad when the next one comes out. Like, just. Yeah. We'll, we'll take it. You've, you've you've made us like feel good for a day or so. Just 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 leave it. Right. Um, but no, it's 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 really cool. I didn't expect that to come of Killing Floor at all because it was. I mean, we have a fucking. I, I don't know what the the sample is. It's like a didgeridoo like, or like panpipe type thing, made percussive. Right. So when people listen to it, like when you watch the re, um, the reaction videos, they'll listen to the first twenty seconds of the song or ten seconds or whatever, and they're like, hmm. I don't know if I like this, and then it kicks in, and everyone's like, "Oh shit, what the fuck!" <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm well into that. I think it's cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad people liked it. With the pandemic and stuff, since you guys are kind of scattered, like, how did you go about the writing and all that? What was the writing process like for you? Uh, it was no different because we right we always used to send things between each other. So before, okay. fuck, before we started the band, like before Graphic Nature even came out. And we recorded the first EP. We'd never sat in a room. We'd never practiced together. We oh, just wow. wrote these parts uh, like separate from each other, went to George Lever to record the first EP. And then we're like, cool, we should probably learn these as a band now and actually see if we can play them. Um, it's a weird way of doing things because in my other bands that I've played with, it's always been, let's get into a room, write a song, see how it sounds, go into the studio once we think it's finished. So, yeah, sending stuff over like Dropbox and Google Drive and stuff is it was no different to us. It was I mean, kind of good, actually. <laughs> like, right. I was yeah. going to say that actually, you know, I, I champion that kind of process more uh, than most dudes do. And, um, you know, it's probably bad for me to say because my professional life, I am a record producer as well. Yeah. So me saying that is probably going to get me just beat up by the community. But I kind of champion that because. I mean, <laughs> Pre-production always was like kind of a secret, not so secret thing back in the days when people would meet up before the pandemic and all that. And you would have to spend all this time in the studio and extra budget just getting the pre-production days in, right? Because you need yeah. to see now whatever you've come, like made up in your garage or wherever you practice, you now need to put it together to see if it even works. Yeah, yeah. That's out of the equation. You can actually do your own pre-pro, not spend all this crazy amount of money, uh -huh. right? And then actually... What happens is we don't even lose budget. What happens is it gets the band more inspired to crank out even more music. And yeah. what would become the days of pre-production just turn into more songs. Yeah. So it just evens Absolutely. out. And I think it's super cool. Yeah. I like it as well because coming from a person such as myself, it just means that I don't have to go to practice all the time. Right. And I can literally write from home. Like, it's great. I'm very happy. And nobody has to look over your back and like backseat write you or anything like yeah. that. And so I take it from what you're saying, man, uh, that you all have the ability to record each other, right? Like you, you have your own setup, uh, your guitarist, same thing. Yeah. I mean, it's mainly me and Pete that will write the songs. Um, sure. The drums get re like kind of programmed in by Pete and then Jack will be like, yeah, this is cool. And then once we get into the studio, we're we'll like, right, cool. Now I'm going to do something different. But it's just like a bare bones structure of a song, just so he knows where like certain bits are going to be. But right. I think Matas does some stuff as well, and he's going to hate me for using his government name, as he says for some reason. Um, he, I think he does have recording equipment at, at home. Uh, if not, he does it with Pete as well. So, right on, right on. Yeah. And then um, you guys, I saw that you guys stepped into the studio with uh, George Lever. How was that? Talk about that experience. That was cool. It was our first. Um, Obviously, I think within the first two EPs with George. All right. And that was great. It was like a, a new experience for us all just to go somewhere else. And like I think it was in like, I want to say near Devon. It was somewhere like way, way out um, from anywhere near where we live. Um, it was cool. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a, a huge like learning curve for me as a vocalist because 
that was like the first proper time that I'd been in the studio as a vocalist. Like any other times I'd done it was always I'm at home with an SM58 just screaming in my room. And I was, gonna, in my... Um, I was actually going to ask that. I was going to say, is that the first time you've actually stepped into a studio with uh, with a producer? Have you recorded before? But you just told me you usually do it yourself. You kind of learned, right? Yeah. So I, um, as a vocalist, yeah, in the studio, that was the first time. I, I played drums in bands since I was 14. Um, and had done, I think this is my third album now with a band. Um, it's such a strange thing, but like, yeah, doing those two EPs with George was great because it was like, this is what we kind of wanted to sound like. We have like unreleased songs from when we done the EPs with him because we done more than we intended to release. And those, I think, have been lost into the ether of like the internet because I don't know where they are. They weren't great, but like, it would be nice to listen back and be like, oh, cool, this is how we sound now. Um, but yeah, with, with, with our new producer doing the album was next level. It was wild. That's cool. Yeah. He did Black Coast album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. And that, that's fucking incredible. So yeah, yeah, when we heard that, we were like, let's give Sam a go. Let's yeah. see how it goes on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically like going back to the, the drumming thing is like, Sam wouldn't let me like, we, we never edited any vocals to like put them in, in time. It was always like they were recorded as if they were live kind of thing. Yeah. So now yeah. even like my fucking like anal self, when I'm listening back to the album now, I'm like, oh, I come in like half a beat too late on this vocal take. But to me, no one else is going to notice, but it's just me. Not uh, only that, I but I also like that. think... Right. And not only that, but I also think, oh, well, there's two things here. Like, first of all, the, the reason I mentioned about the drumming thing, and it makes so much sense now is because... It's not that I notice. What I notice is that the vocals sound very natural, right? Mm. Sounds like, hey, the vocalist is just skilled. End of story, right? You've just, just confirmed that. And you've also <laughs> confirmed the theory I've had for a long time, which is yeah. usually vocalists who play drums have, I won't say better timing than those that don't, but their timing is definitely stepped way up, right? Oh, yeah. I, the thing is, when, I, when like whenever we play live, I, I don't care about whatever the guitars are doing. I'm just following Jack. Because if Jack's in time, I'm in time. And I, I know where the vocal hits come in just to do with the drums. Uh, right. And I right. think you could just kind of tell. Yeah. And, and especially like writing that way as well. It's there's a I don't know the fucking vocalist's name, but he plays in a band called Verse. And the way that he does his vocals in a percussive way that go with the drums rather than the guitars is so fucking sick that I was just like graphic nature. I have to have that kind of vocal. And there you um, go. We had a we had a guy, uh, actually a few people in our Discord actually that have tried to do the vocals like a, a vocal take of White Noise, and they're like, we can't fucking do it. Like we just can't keep in time. And I'm like, yes, this is sick. I I can't fucking do it live. But I am but, the greatest. <laughs> no, no but you see, that's that was one of those things that I was like, I found it very like worth harping on because that's the main thing that stuck out for me. Yeah. Okay. Right? Immediately, I, mean, I was telling good. Nick like. Wow, he's good. Vocalist is very good. So, very nice kudos thing. to you, man. Kudos to Cheers, you on man. that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and also, um, see, I am paying mentioned... him. <laughs> <laughs> no payment here. <laughs> um, also, a question for you regarding back to the whole conversation we're having about the production. So, you had George Lever do the mixing only, and or also producing for the previous stuff. Uh, so George, for our first two EPs, mixed it, and then we got somewhere on. Uh, uh, sorry, someone else to master it, oh. and then same deal with with the album. It was Sam that re that mixed it, and then we got someone else to master it. But, got it, got it. Yeah, nice, very cool. Spinning back to we were talking about how your music is spreading lately. You know, the, the Killing Floor, the the music video is growing. Your traction is growing just with the audio. What piece of your music do you think travels the farthest with new listeners? Is there anything that comes to mind of like, if someone latches on to this in our music, what is it? Oh, dude, I don't even fucking know. Because like, you're probably the same as me. Whereas like, you know, when you listen to a piece of music, like I'll listen to vocals and drums in my ears but like pete will listen to guitars in his ears so i'm not too sure how, like what listeners will take from it in my own 
you know special little world i'm like oh everyone likes it because the vocals are cool but they they probably like it because the riffs are cool or the drum beats cool yeah. some people like it because the production is cool um i i would really like to think that the message behind it is why everyone likes it but i don't think people look in to it too much unless you're a super fan um, that's that's fair yeah and and yeah. for your your perspective of you know we're we're not really anyone at this point, mm-hmm. you know, why, why would you necessarily consider there are super fans out there? Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I, I do think though, and I would really like to dig into the lyrics a little bit. I don't have any necessarily mm-hmm. offhand, but I, I know you like a lot of interviews that you've done and a lot of conversation that we have, you just put in your, what personal emotions, feelings, and you write about you and put it into, you know, what is it? Rage filled drum beats. Is that? Yeah. Right. When was that a quote from our interview before? Rage filled drum beats. I, it, was, it, it was, it was pure else? anger over heavy riffs and drum beats. That's what it is. Oh yeah. yeah. That sounds like something stupid. I would say, uh, yeah, it's basically that. <laughs> um, yeah. Lyrics wise, it's, it's all about, uh, mental health. Apart from Killing Floor, Killing Floor is the only one that, that wasn't about mental health. That was just a weird kind of scenario I came up with in my head, uh, probably around two or three in the morning, just listening to weird kind of ambient uh, instrumental music and just come up with the idea of this guy that was really obsessed and introverted with like, you know, weird murder TV shows and films and comic books and thought, yeah, this is a good idea. I'm going to try it. And it doesn't really work because, as you can see in the video, he's not covering his fucking hair. You know, he's just got a bandage on his face. He doesn't know what he's doing. Right. So that was a kind of fun thing to do. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's the thing that will carry on. I, I feel like I'm at the strongest when I write about shit that I've done, gone through myself. Um, so that's why, yeah, mental health. The album's completely about depression, so it's really fucking dark uh, in that sense. But, you know... Not enough people sing about it, so that's my job. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> I, I I appreciate that you state you, you you added that that's my job piece because I my next question was you know do you, do you feel that that's a hole that a void that you see that people just don't talk about it and and you just confirmed that um, a lot of people yeah. you know yeah. it, it's it's growing but a lot of people just don't mention it. Yeah, I don't know. Whether it's just because I'm slightly older and don't really listen to a lot of new bands uh so maybe i'm just completely ignorant to the fact that other bands are doing it um but the bands of our age and like certain level or whatever i don't see that coming from from them which is completely fine like if you haven't got depression that's fucking sick because right. it sucks yeah. Rock but up. yeah it's like i i always wanted to be the kind of person that I would looked up to as a kid, like I always wanted to find out that a band member really liked video games or really liked movies or comic books like I do. And I never really found that. So I was like, fuck, if I'm going to become a vocalist, then I need to put my everything into it. And when I was a kid, I I found out I was kind of depressed at like, I don't really know, like definitely 13 or 14. And I didn't know any vocalists that went through that. I thought everyone was tough as fuck. You're in a metal band, Mm. you're tough. Um, so I, I, I'd really like to be that kind of person for kids that are getting into metal to, uh, you know, see that there is this band that plays tough music, but still has a message that like, yeah, we're going through the same shit that you are. So, you know, if you want to chat about it, we're here. I don't fucking, my Instagram's not private. If you want to message me, go for it. Like there's never going to be any kind of like, like weird ego shit with me. Right. Because I've been doing it for so long and I know what it's like to be like shunned by someone that you fucking look up to. So yeah. they always say uh, that famous phrase, don't beat your heroes. Yeah, it's it's very true. There, there's been a few that I've met that I'm like, yeah, it's been a few that are like, oh, you're actually fucking sick. But then others that I'm like, yeah. oh, I wish everyone knew that you were like this, but I can't say anything because I have no evidence to back <laughs> up. Right. But, yeah, it's, know. it's an interaction that may have gotten construed by some means, way, shape, or form. And, and you're like, mm-hmm. wow, if I say this, it, it just, I don't know how that's going to go. So I'm just going to yeah. bite my tongue. Yeah. Yeah. I met one of mine uh, in 2020. Well, I met two right. of mine at the same convention in 2020. Oh. Yeah. One of them 
I got the word I can use is vibed out. I got vibed out in five minutes. I Shit. couldn't. I just couldn't. Uh, oh my god, I just couldn't. The other one, I was hoping he wasn't anything like the other guy, and I was right. The dude was the yeah. sweetest guy. Even uh, took us out to dinner and stuff. Didn't have That's to do that. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. They're the real fucking dudes that though, like people like that that are just genuine are like yeah. so rare that when you actually meet them and they take you by surprise. It's like, fuck, like this is actually what it's like to meet someone that you look up to. Right. Like yep. if anyone looks down on you from their position, like they can't say shit anyway, because they wouldn't be where they are without any of you that are uplifting them to get them to, to, to that position in the first place. Correct. It fucking blows my mind. Like I don't understand how you can be like that, but right. you know, yeah. come back to me in 10 years when I'm like shunning everyone. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> don't talk to me. <laughs> and you know, and sometimes it's the one man that you don't think would be that way. Right. So for me yeah. in that yeah. cer certain scenario, it was the one who I was like, I bet you this person is special, man. Like, I don't know how to say it. Yeah. How else to say yeah, it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I bet you this dude's really like into himself, very cocky. Complete opposite, polar opposite of that. Super cool. Wanted to took the time to get to know who the hell I was. Like yeah. I'm a nobody in your in your world, man. Like yeah, yeah. It's, it's so important, man. It's so important because, like you know, ten minutes of your time for to meet someone that's looked up to you for so long, it can change your fucking day. Like your day is so right. much better when your expectations are actually met. But you know, meeting someone that fucking sucks, and you're like, oh, well that sucked and now i've got to like hope that someone else isn't a dick right yeah just just ruins the day right that's exactly what it was yeah, yeah. you nailed it man well you yeah. absolutely nailed it it segues into the next uh couple questions here and it, it really comes down to you know networking and getting to know people you know it's mm. it's the same concept you know you whatever position you're in whether you're band getting to a venue and you're meeting you know someone there um or yeah. you're an operator and you're meeting the band coming to you, you know, don't, don't be a dick, but you know, networking is important. Take that, take those few minutes. Um, like you guys being, you know, a, a newer band before you got signed, you were doing the DIY stuff and mm -hmm. you obviously have been in a couple bands before that. Are there any strategies, you know, cause I, so I, I should back up a step here. People now look at you because you are signed, I would think. Some people, you know, as, as much as it may not feel like it, people look up to you and say, oh, it's a signed band. I want to be that way. You know, there's a lot of DIYs mm -hmm. that are like, oh, man, that's my end goal. I want to get there. It changes nothing. It, <laughs> well, that's like, true. From the get-go, it, it changes nothing. It doesn't matter whether you're signed or unsigned. Um, it's about how much work you put into the, the shit that you believe in. Right. Being signed is just like... I love my labels so much. Like they are fucking awesome, but it's just the same as like, you know, being, um, they're, they're like investors, aren't they? So that they're investing into your band, into your product to then put it out to then, you know, make money from that. Cause that's how business works. Mm -hmm. right. but if you can, if you can do that without having investors, you're still doing the same shit, but without, you know, someone taking a cut. So if anything, <laughs> DIY is great. And I've done both sides of things and I loved both sides of things. There are stuff that I couldn't have done right now without Rude's help. Right. And there are stuff back then that I did, which is the reason why I'm in debt now, but I wouldn't change it because I had that experience. Right. So, yeah. And, and I apologize. I have not mentioned it yet. Rude records um, is the, the record label. Shout out to them. Um, they are fucking awesome. <laughs> they are awesome. They have yeah. quite a great collective of, of bands, quite a great roster. Um, so it, just diving into what you just said, though, are there a couple of habits or strategies that maybe you had, you know, going through that to get to, you know, to be successful that you could kind of share with DIY artists listening? Um, I don't really know because... I don't think we're successful. <laughs> I know I'm putting like a, such a downer on this fucking thing, but like for me, the way that I've done bands is, is so different each time I've been in one. So my first band I was in when I was 14 to about 19. Second band I was in from like 20 till 24. And then I done like a, a small thing and then obviously joined graphic. Well, we created graphic nature when I was, I don't know, 26, 27. 
every step from each band has been completely different because the times have changed so much. So yeah. before it was like, oh, let's release an album and the album will do well and we'll get in Kerrang! And that'll be cool. And that worked in 2008. Right. And then in like another band, I was like, cool, let's just play as many fucking shows as we can. Doesn't matter who's who we're supporting, let's just tour. And that worked for us. That was cool. Yeah. And now it's like, how much content can we put out to try and re remain as relevant as we can in the time where social media is so fast. So the first time we released the, the, the first EP, it was like, Oh, we'll release a song a month. And that helped yeah. because it was a constant stream of content, right? The first song come out grit. Everyone was like, well, this is sick. And then the second song come out and was like, okay, cool. This is, this is cool. Third song come out. Someone's like, Oh, I've seen this name graphic nature for the past three months. I guess I should check them out. Yep. And then that grows and grows and grows. So it's just, I think adapt with, the times that you're in sometimes it doesn't work the way that it used to and it never will because you know back then like even before i started a band in like the early 90s or whatever and like the 80s like they didn't have social media they didn't have like streaming sites so their thing was literally touring and releasing albums because th that wasn't a, a thing that they were able to do yeah so yeah just adapt and um don't be afraid to to try things that seem uncool like I was so against TikTok. I don't use TikTok. Felt. But like, I don't use TikTok for myself. Right. But I watch a lot of TikTok and it's fucking hilarious. I find funny shit on there and I sometimes find bands on there. Yeah. So it's clearly a, a, a platform that kids and like, you know, millennials and whoever else are fucking using. So it's definitely a good platform to use. Just don't be put off by the fact that just because kids use a platform, that means that it's not for you. Right. Just fucking try everything you can because one of them is going to fucking work. Right. Yeah, some, just, yeah. Somewhere something's going to stick to the wall and... The numbers game. Yep. Yeah, just just don't be too proud to, to you know, just try shit. Like, you're never too cool to try something. And yeah. like, I'm sure people, you know, like, when we were kids, we had MySpace and then, like, everyone was going, oh, we're going to Facebook. And I was like, no, Facebook is never going to work. MySpace is where it's at. It's the best website ever. And then everyone uses Facebook. Yeah. It's just adapting. That's, I still want to rank my friends. So, you know, bring that right. back. I want to top 10. <laughs> exactly. I want someone to feel really bad that they're like number four. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is why. Wait a second. We just went out the other. No, you're still four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is the reason why you're four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, you, we, we've discussed in the past as well, you know, how stressful to an extent it is to craft, write and curate your own content. And, and referring to TikTok and trying and adapting everything, you know, yeah. do you still feel that now as the band? And, you know, how do you guys cope with that struggle to kind of stay relevant now, I guess? I think it definitely was a, an issue when we first spoke like two years ago. Yeah. It's, it's technically not three years ago now, is it? No, it was December. It's, it's two years. Two years, two years. Yeah. Two years. It was like that when we when we spoke before because we didn't really know as much as we do now, obviously, because we're, we're constantly learning throughout the years of being in this band. Right. Now doing content is so easy because we know exactly what we need to post mm. and exactly what we need to do. We've got the color scheme down. We've got the outfits down. We've got how we present ourselves on social media, on, on the band side of things. Everything is short and sweet. Graphic Nature doing this, Graphic Nature doing that. Like, that's it. There's no big, long text. If you want to see the big, long text, come to my personal page because that's when I'm giving you my heartfelt right. thank you. But everything's short and sweet because, like I said, it's quick. Social media is quick. They don't want to read an essay. They want to see Graphic Nature supporting cancer bats. That's cool. Like, next one. They don't want to see Graphic Nature is so happy to announce that we're touring with cancer bats. This is something we've wanted to do for many years. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I have yeah. wanted to do it for many years, but I'm not going to fucking tell you on the, the, the main like page kind of thing yeah yeah um so yeah it's it's definitely it's it's much easier now just because we know exactly what we need to do fair um, i i don't mean yeah. to like dredge up an old interview by by any means mm -hmm. i you know these were these have been points on my mind um so sorry if uh no, no, it no, sounds no, 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 dated, no. but not, not, not only that yeah you said something pretty cool there um actually that i feel that not enough people talk about and something as simple as if you're on social medias for your band and stuff like that Keep it short. Keep it sweet. You know, kind yeah. of. I see a lot of bands do the complete opposite of that. And yeah. uh, then their bios, they go into freaking life stories. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? so, like, I, 
I have a short attention span as it is. I Same. find it hard to read like a full book. Mm. Um, Same. So yeah, unless they did it with that. Have you seen that um, bionic reading or something where they like they they bold the first two letters of each word, and it's really good for people that have like neurodiv- neurodivergent heads. Um, so you can pick up on the words like way quicker than like oh. reading without it. I'll send it to you. It's so, uh, yeah, it's so they put, they put like the first two letters together, so it's a yeah. So if 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 a word would, like you know, for instance, the first word was stone, the the S and the T would be in bold and like oh, highlighted kind of thing. Okay, yeah. I so gotcha. like your brain automatically finishes the rest of the word. I can predict. So it, yeah. you can read. Yeah, so you can read super quick, and it's really good for people that have a short attention span. Wow, that's actually perfect for me. I yeah, only dude. have definitely have a yeah. look. At <laughs> I only have attention to detail in my professional life when I'm working, I'm mixing music yeah. or producing. Anything yeah, yeah. outside of that, dude, uh, it's like ooh, fly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that sounds like ADHD, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some some of that mixed in there. I was gonna say by the end of all these these episodes we record, we're just gonna have you know it's gonna be self diagnosed of yep oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure that's it yeah it, um, it it's it goes to uh, uh there's obviously number games out there of yeah. you know so and so spends x amount of time just you know at first glance what is the impression and and that exactly that keeping it short sweet to the point nice graphics mm-hmm. good looks yeah that helps. yeah if you I think nailing. Yeah, nailing down your color scheme and aesthetic, I think, is such a big thing. And it's also another point that's so missed. Uh, just yeah. because you look good as a band, mm-hmm. but if the aesthetics don't really match your music, your sound, you know what I mean? Like with the whole vibe you're going for, the vibe isn't complete, right? right. If the vibe's not complete, how can you expect anybody else to get it, right? Yeah, if we were just in like civilian clothes, I don't know how else to explain yeah. that. But if we if we weren't in our stage gear, like in music videos or in photos, they'd just be like... Oh, it's another band that have just joined at the pub and like, yeah. they're now like going to try it and play a few gigs and it might get big. You just have to have a look. Um, it do. doesn't, like, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, costumes and, you know, everyone needs all black, wear all black socks, all this, all that. It just has to be like a solidified look. Like if you're into skatewear, mm-hmm. you're all into skatewear and that's a look. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to wear masks on stage, that's a look. But stick to it and don't fucking change it halfway down the line because, you know, something else has come up, some new trends come up, and you're like, I need to jump on it. Just do your thing correct. and, like, it works. Yeah, correct. And, like, color schemes and stuff like that's a very important mm-hmm. thing. I'm starting to notice that now um, as I'm working more and more with a couple of videographers and stuff, they're starting to explain, uh, like, DOPs are starting to explain the importance of that. And it's, it's all clicking in my head, like, oh, my God, this is, you know. Yeah, this, is right. <laughs> this is the way yeah let me ask you a question and this is more of advice uh for younger bands up and coming uh yeah. you know a lot a lot of the times newer bands and i'm sure nick uh you've heard this a lot before uh newer bands they their only goal you know when they're younger is to try and get in the eyes of a label to get signed that's what they want right yeah um if I won't even ask for advice because every band's journey is different, but let's talk about yours. What got you guys into in like rude records is like scope. Um, I think this might be incorrect as well, but I'm pretty sure our manager, Chris emailed them directly and okay. he, he, he was initially trying to push us out to smaller labels because, you know, being a, being a small band on a big label, might look good but you're always the bottom of the barrel yeah yeah so you know if you're on roadrunner they're they're looking out for slipknot right and you're way 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 at the bottom so you're going to get nothing but if you go for a a smaller label that actually you know not saying that roadrunner don't i I don't want anyone putting words in my mouth right right right. and like labels that care for all of their bands that have a small roster that have like you know eight to ten bands and they can like take the time to work with all of them he was like that's the kind of label you want to go for And I think Rude were the first people that came back with an offer to to sign us. And we just collectively agreed. We like read through the contracts, like saw what they do. And we're just like, yeah, this is this is it. We'll we'll try it out. And yeah, it took it took a little while for them to like understand us as a band, because we're we have a certain look and we want to do that and we don't want to do like, you know, hey, we're graphic nature, what's going on? Like, welcome yeah. to our house. We're gonna play some music now. It took a little while for them to understand, like, this is how we do things. 
And if you're cool with it, we'd like to keep it that way. Um, but now, like, I'm on a call with them every month, just like chatting about social stuff, chatting about how, you know, the album production is coming along. They're great. I love them. They're awesome. That's cool. And what? you you will be releasing, um, or by the time this comes out, your mm -hmm. uh, brand new debut album, A Mind Waiting to Die, will be out by that time. Um, it will indeed. And on Rude Records, yeah. I mean, they've been supportive through the whole process, I'm sure. Um, like you were saying, yeah. just, it's gotta yeah. be exciting. Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to show you, but I kind of want to show you. <laughs> um, Technically it's out already. If we're. Yeah. Hold on. Bear with me. One sure. <laughs> that's, that's the first oh, that's ooh, rad. tape of the album. That's rad. That we've got, oh, I don't know which side. Those are goes. sleek. Yeah. The, the CDs are somewhere and the final is nearly finished. So it'll be with me soon, but. Yeah, you guys are the first to see that, so that's pretty cool. That's <laughs> rad. I want a vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're I so sick. We collection. just got the, the final... Um, we were sorting out the sticker today, for, just for the for the top, and then it's done. That's amazing. So, awesome. Very excited, yeah. That's awesome, and it's going to be... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, this is your first label release. Uh, right, this with is... Graphic Nature. You know what? You, you might actually be right. Um, no, New Skin... New Skin was via Rude. Then they, Rude. Yeah, then they released... Um, I think they re-released the first EP under yeah, their name as it. well. Okay. Um, so this, yeah, the first full-length album with, with Rude, for sure. Yeah. That's where I went wrong. Okay. Got yeah. it, got it. Yeah. No, you're good. Clarifying the details. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. It's, like, it's cool to know these things. It's like another question I had for you, um, back to the same topic we were talking about. You said you managed to reach out to Rude Records and stuff. Uh, let me, let's go one step back. How did you know, at what point did you know maybe that, hey, it's time to get a manager? Because I know earlier we were talking about how a lot of things that label is helping you with right now, you were also doing yourself, but now it's easier because without them, you couldn't have gotten there, whether it's financially, yeah. whether it's via connections, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's the weird, the weird thing is like, we've had Chris since the start. We had oh, wow. him before the band even started he was just he's a really good friend of our drummers and he was with them for a previous band uh which i did well, well i did vocals i did vocals for them for like six months and then they when i joined that band they were like yeah we're dissolving this band completely we're gonna do another thing do you still want to stay on um and i was like yeah sure so chris kind of carried on from that and yeah from the start he was always the We'd send songs to him and he'd be like, Oh yeah, does this sound good? And he was like, nah, write another one. Write another one. Write another Did one. Did he and really? The most, the most honestly, I wanted to fucking kill him. He was the most frustrating person in the world. Oh my goodness. And then once we settled on like the final songs that were done, he didn't reply to us. And then we recorded the EP. <laughs> he didn't reply to us. And then he like replied to one of my things and was like, Yeah, man, sounds great. And I was like, You're a fucking cunt, man. Like <laughs> But he was like, dude, honest. He was like, honestly, man, I did this because I know it would annoy you, and you'd put it all into your performance. So wow, yeah, that is he's a jerk. <laughs> that's a manager no. who knows you, though. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, if yeah. he knew that was, was a tick, I mean, that's not just like, hey, let's work with you. <laughs> that's a close relationship of I'm gonna get under their skin. Yeah, and he did. But now he's like on point. He knows. He knows we we know what we're doing now. So yeah. It worked, but that fucking year was the worst. Just yeah. anything prior to like grit coming out and graphic nature being announced. We only had a name and like a handful of songs that we wanted to create. Right. Uh, so when he kept on shutting us down, it was like, fucking hell, when is it going to be good enough? And then it got to the point where we were like, you know what? Fuck Chris. We're going to write the music that we want to fucking write. And then that turned out to be the ones that stuck. So, <laughs> And that's what yeah. you still do. So... That, you, you yeah, know, yeah. You're, you're doing exactly what you want to do, writing what you yeah. want to write. And everyone around you knows that this is who you, you, this is your genuine form. I would say you're still growing. Yeah. You obviously will. Um, but you know, rude records and, and Chris and your team is on board and that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. amazing to hear. Yeah. It's very cool. And, and they, they also have a really good sense of humor. So I can be like this on a, 
on a podcast and completely slate them and they'll be like haha you're a dick as well it's fine I, so. I was gonna say is it well, we're gonna have to get this uh reviewed by rude before th- thank you oh uh, no no definitely <laughs> um so one thing obviously we we built this uh show around was to focus on songs that inspire you and and mm-hmm. being completely honest obviously you've evolved from some inspiration uh along the lines and so you gave us a couple songs and i'd mm-hmm. kind of just like to dive in a little bit see what you know what you have drawn from them that either brought you to the current state as who you are or something that impacts what you create now. Um, yeah. Sure. And uh, the first track, I don't know if you sent them necessarily in order, but the first track you had dropped to me was no life by slipknot. Yeah. Off the self-titled, which, you know, what's that album? 20 years old now or so. <laughs> yeah. 99. Right. I think it was 99. Oh, yeah. no. That's older. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What a year. Yep, yep. Yep. Let's not go into how old we all are. No, no, no. Um, oh. Yeah, it was 90... 99. Yeah. Confirming. Yeah. I, I know you draw a lot from Slipknot, not just in the generic new metal sense. That just, I think, being, knowing the band members with, with past history and conversations is, you know you all kind of said, Hey, let's go back to Slipknot like 99 to 2002 and just kind of live there because that's what yeah. inspires us. That really, we draw from that. So what yeah. about this track specifically? Uh, I mean this, the, the album itself was the first really heavy album that I got, got into. I was into like heavier music at the time, but not like, you know, not like Slipknot. This was more fight style, but we'll get to that. Um, it was handed to me in school. I was handed like a stack of CDs and it was like Soulfly, System of a Down, uh, Limp Bizkit. Um, I think Static X was in it. And then the Slipknot record. And that was the one that stuck with me. And throughout listening to it, I'll still listen to it at least once a day. Um, and No Life to me has always been my favorite song. And I have no idea why, but I think it's just because it's such a different Slipknot song compared to their other ones. Like it's such a kind of, it's so new metal to me because it starts off with like this huge rap section and then kicks into like the heavier shit. Yeah. Um, and I just love how fast his vocals are and the, the drumming, like Joey Jordison was a huge fucking inspiration to me when I was a kid. Corey Taylor is now for a, for a vocalist. Um, yeah, it's just a fucking great track. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really into oh, it. It's, it's, it's funny because I, I actually have not been, you know, back to that album for a, a brief amount of time here. And mm. I when you sent it to me, I listened to the whole thing today and No Life. It just it is a bit wacky. But at the same mm-hmm. time, like I, I, I heard it and I said, you know what? I completely understand what's going on yeah. in his head now. You know, That's- <laughs> I think I like it because like it's probably not a lot of people's favorite songs. Right. Like, you know, everyone knows Spit It Out and Wait and Bleed and yeah. Duality before I forget all of that. But I always find that the bands, the singles that the bands don't release, like, you know, they'll release Spit It Out, but then you listen to Diluted and Only One right. and No Life. Like, they're so fucking hard. Right. Like, why would you not release them? But then you realize that the most popular ones are the catch it ones. And no right. life is so weird. It takes you on this weird kind of fucking trip. And I just, yeah. I just think it's a heavy ass song. Like I just yeah, think it's so a super good. heavy track. It's so good. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And That's then, what I like about it, to be honest. Mm. And then those unreleased singles, really. I mean, people will, at re- in reality, experience that with graphic nature. You know, when when we hit the the album, it will. You know, it helps make the composition. And that's, yeah. you know, that that's an even better part when you do go to release an album in today's day and age, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, they like it. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> I, mean, I love it. I mean, it's the, the numbers on Spotify, man, they speak for themselves right now. I mean, you guys are still growing. That's totally cool. But like, you're moving fast. Yeah. Uh, whether I know, I know you said you don't view yourself as successful. And honestly, that's a great state of mind because it just means you're head to the grindstone. Keep working, keep working, keep working. And that's the right yeah. way. But you guys are growing quickly, very quickly, yeah. um, especially for a band that formed in 2019. Yeah. yeah. I mean, technically, I have... it was like the last couple of months of 2019 as well. Oh, right. my gosh. So it's not even yeah. really 2019. So it's like, look, yeah. I've got friends uh, that have been doing the band thing for 10 plus years, and yeah. they don't have your Spotify numbers. 
Yep. You know what I mean? And they're great. I mean, they, they just don't have your Spotify number. So you guys are working. It's 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 about the songs, but it's also the work you're putting in. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of I kind of put it down to like the amount of time that we've put in collectively as musicians as well, because right. like I started drumming when I was nine and I'm thirty one this year. And you know, I never got anywhere near to where kind of we are as a band now in any of my previous bands. Like we got kind of big enough like in our local scene and like in some other places, which was cool, but it's never been this big. So for me, it's kind of like, okay, cool. You've, you've done a lot of work. So as much as I hate being like, you know, accepting the fact that something has got big, like I feel like we have put in the time to yeah. earn our spot. You've earned um, it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. rare thing for me. Like <laughs> acknowledging something. But, yeah, and yeah. The blood, sweat and tears. Uh, you, you've yeah. earned it you've worked for it you've earned it obviously the music speaks for itself like the songs are not, it's not just another heavy band or uh, they're, they're good songs man like they're good songs they're well crafted yeah um they're they've got you know the transitions are smooth for them uh the heavy yeah. parts are, are godly heavy uh the parts that are supposed to be groovy like that little bit of groove metal you guys got going on in there is sick <laughs> you know it so rides everything fun. rides there's even for for like a for for a band in such a heavy state as yourselves it's so um dynamic at the same time and i say i love that um i can't listen to just straight beat down music or just breakdown after breakdown or whatever you know just heavy i can't even listen to that anymore you know what i mean it's yeah. hard to it, these days it's hard to even pull that off because it may seem like it's not that it may seem like it's not that hard of a thing to do but it is yeah it's extremely I hard think, and you guys are pulling it off so well and i know that you guys are more in the new metal base but still man you're pulling it off like it sounds it's, like yeah. it's one of those things man like we only really started integrating that into the album i know like some of the other songs like had a lot of groove to them but they never had dynamics in the sense of like vocals or like a song never like went up and then went really down to then go way back up like in killing floor right um so when we done the album it was always like oh what can we try what can we try that's different yeah. from the other shit and it was yeah comfort zone is here you're meant to be over here let's try some weird shit and that's you gotta yeah there's a it, fog you have to cut above that man you have yeah. to cut above that fog and i can see that you guys absolutely get it let me ask you something what was it like for you when you first got the songs back the newer ones at least and you just listened what was that like dude it's like <laughs> I was on the train back, so I we recorded in Stoke on Trent, which is about a five hour drive, which is probably nothing compared to the States. Like that's just that's like a, a weekend thing for you guys. Um for us it's a Sometimes. long drive. Yeah. Sometimes, I yeah. I ended up yeah, I ended up going home like after I'd finished vocals. And we didn't even get like the masters back. It was literally like, oh, here's the desk mix or whatever it is of just like the rough sound of the song. Right. And I was just listening through all of them. And like, I knew that it was good to me because I got goosebumps for like three songs. That's and I, I, only ever, I only ever get that if I listen to like fucking Final Fantasy soundtracks or like Kingdom Hearts soundtracks. Oh, like, yes. I get goosebumps from that because it has such a deep emotional meaning with me. Yeah, so for right. me to get that from my own music, I feel like I've put enough of myself into it for me to then be like, oh shit, like, fuck this is this is good yeah so yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is me out there and it yeah. sounds great you know that that's a confident feeling that's that's cool yeah it was i think it was probably one of the first times i've come out of the studio happy with what i tracked because yeah. there have been times before not that i'd been like oh this sucks but like when I used to drum, it was like, I'd, I'd come back, we'd listen to the album. I'm like, yeah, that's sick. And then I'd sit on it for a week and be like, oh, I, could, I should have added something else here. Or I should have done something else here. This one, I'm like, there might be one bit on a song where I'm like, I should have come in with something cooler. But other than that, yeah. I'm well happy. <laughs> and do you yeah. think that's because uh, you as a musician have just grown to where you can kind of let go of smaller things now? Or, or is it just you just feel like you got everything out? Um, I, I think more of like, just don't dwell on anything that's already been done. Like if the, if I loved it at the time, which I still do love the album, I think it's great. Um, there's nothing I can do to change it now. So why, why would I bother worrying about that? We should be worrying about writing a second album. 
Thank you. It's about yeah. that acceptance. You know you have something good, and you're like, okay, this was the snapshot of the best we had at the moment. This mm-hmm. is great. Let the world hear it. Let's move on to the next thing instead of dwelling on the same stuff over and over. Yeah, what, you know? like, oh, I should have changed this. And okay, Who's cool. going to yeah. notice, you know? That's... Yeah, the only person that's going to notice is me. So yeah. at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. That's, that sounds fairly true to the uh, second inspiration artist you sent, Under Oath, where... Mm-hmm. people Ooh. say hey go back to you're only chasing or they're only chasing safety yeah. and uh you know everyone wants the old sound and yeah. but that was a snapshot you know there's someone new yeah. you said us... even like erase me was like the, the album erase me oh yes that they brought out a couple of years ago it still sounds like that old sound it's just an evolved yep. version of it correct yeah correct so, yeah it yeah, was a very was... trent reznor vibe to it too i loved it yeah yeah, yeah. it it I'm a huge Under Oath guy, so, you know, it, it, it gets me excited to talk Under Oath with other artists as well, of course. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love that the song comes from the Find a Great Line uh, yeah. the, it, and not from their only song. chasing because everybody just seems to go back to their only chasing. Nothing wrong with that album. It's fine. But right. like the that Find a Great like, Line was amazing. Their only chasing safety was like my least favorite album. And I know everyone's going to be like, what? You're a fucking dick. Look, no, I, I, I mean, you, you got your opinions. That's fine. I got into like, uh, where are we? They're only chasing safety. I was, what, 12 at the time. So I think I completely missed that because I was so into like Slipknot. So I hadn't really yeah. discovered the whole post hardcore thing yet. So when to find the great line come out, I was obviously, you know, just starting my own band that was a post hardcore band. And they were like, listen to this album. So to find the great line for me was just like, holy fucking shit. Right. And with like, in regards to myself opening the fucking album, it's like the best opening song ever. I don't care how big your band is. That is the best opening song yeah. of an album for me. It's so fucking good. Well, to find the great line came out. I was going to say, uh, they're only chasing safety. I was pretty sure it was 2004 to find the great line. Yeah. was 2006 for me. I mean, both those albums were, were big, uh, you mm-hmm. know, Lost in the Sound of Separation was is like still within my top five all time. You know, oh, yeah. It, yeah. and but it wouldn't have been as good without to find the great line. And especially, you know, in regards to myself, the song you had sent. Mm-hmm. It's it's enough of the chaos. It, it's I can see the translation. You know, it, it's the growth of Harvey. You know, here's Slipknot. Here's yeah. a little like you're, you're transitioning, and you yeah. know especially that album under oath still had that bite you know they, they almost transitioned out of hey we want to do this mainstream we don't even know it's mainstream yet and now we're kind of digging back in yeah and that's what made it special um it's that's just, why they're yeah, still a just thing. one of the best bands yeah 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 i agree i'll uh, i'll stand by it like everyone in our discord apart from you is like who the fuck are under oath and i'm like what do you mean who really? the fuck are under oath why are you here why that's have you a, joined this server because i'm the best band. man in the world <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> like what the hell do you have uh, any new um modern band well modern's the wrong word to use but any new bands right now that have come out with music in the past maybe two years that you're really into uh i think i, I might have said it when we spoke before i'm really into modern era Oh, um, that's they, right. They brought out the album, I think it's called Victims of a Modern Age. Yep. Yeah. That album is fucking flawless to me because it just gives me pure like 30 seconds to Mars, like stadium vibes of an album. And it's yeah. fucking incredible. Um, them and Get the Shot. Get the Shot come onto my radar from nowhere. And they've got this song, uh, what is it? Deathbound that they've recently released off their newer album. Okay. It's the hardest fucking shit I've ever heard. It's like... It's so like obnoxiously hardcore, but it's so fucking sick. Uh, I'm well into it. I want to tour with them. I think my friends in Ithaca are touring with them. Oh so my I'm goodness! Pissed. Ithaca I'm pissed. is another <laughs> one. Wow. I have to manifest that. Yeah. yeah. I have to manifest it. It'll happen. I'm just kind of hoping that one of the other bands like gets ill, so it can be Ithaca us and fucking get the shot on tour together. <laughs> Let's go. I'm taking yeah, a plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, they're playing a... like a really small venue in London, though. Uh, New Cross Inn. I think it's like a 200 yeah. cap venue so i'm oh, going to that regardless, yes so. Th- those yeah. those shows with bands you love especially in this genre is just like pack me body to body like yeah. especially post covid and everything you're like get me in there because i want to feel this again i want to feel something yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I, dude, I've been to a show. Well, that's why I went to a show recently, but it was like one of the bigger ones. So there was like, you know, two floor venue, all that. But I haven't yeah. been to like an intimate show in such a long time. And I miss my touring days. I was in the band myself. I miss mm -hmm. touring and all that. Oh, there, oh, there's something about touring. Like I obviously love touring. It's it's what I do. But if you speak to Pete, he's like you're the hardest person to get out of the house. Like, but when you're out of the house, it's fine. But like, I'm such an introverted soul that I I like this is my fucking haven. Like, I love this fucking room. Right. So when someone has to take me out of it, I'm like, I don't want to go. I'm not doing it. You're not fucking taking me. And then when I'm in the road, I'm like, yeah, this is fine, I guess. And then we get to the first venue. Like, I've played the show, and I'm like, yeah, this is cool. I remember why I like doing this. So right. Yeah. I'm just a bit of a fucking stroppy git. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for me it was kind of like that at first and then by like tour number three or four mm -hmm. you're just wanting to go you're yeah. wanting to do it you're, so you're like all right let's go let's go yeah you know what my thing is like i i hated when my mom like before my mom's always supported me and everything that i've done musically but whenever i come back from tour she'd be like oh yeah back to reality now and i'm like no you don't fucking understand like that is my reality this is my i'm just trying to get to that next fucking tour so I don't know if you guys had that at the same time, but I hate when someone's like, oh yeah, you got to go back to the reality, to the grind. And I'm like, I love the grind is the fucking music. Right. The reality so, is the tour. Work so to an extent. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> to an extent, but not from my parents. Because like, like yourself, I had very supportive parents from what I yeah. do. Um, it was more my boss at work I, when I used to do the nine to five grind. Yeah. That guy. Uh, God, man, such a hateful dude. Every time I would come back from tour, he'd be like, Oh, you're you're ready to have a real job now. You get back to this, get back to that. Yeah. Like yeah. your little fairy tale's over. You know, hurry up, get this done, get that done. We have so much work to do. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Yep. I, I, that shit. Like that. I missed a Dread fucking it. my old band on a two week tour with Defeater and Comeback Kid. Oh and I yeah. missed a week of it because I couldn't get the time off work. So ah. I had to get a fill in drummer to fill in for me. I got to do the second half, but if I could go back then, I'd just be like, All right, cool, fuck your job, I'm going. Right. Because now at work, like my job is great. I, I work for a great company that allow me to take the time off. I don't get paid right. for it, but yeah. you know, if they don't have to pay me, they're like, yeah, cool. If I ain't got to pay you, like go. And they support me. They're like, you know, post about me on their fucking socials or whatever. That's cool. Awesome. But it's, it's so nice to have a boss. That's like, he'll come into work and he's in a GN t-shirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's super cool. Um, yeah. I can literally just be like, Hey, I've got to do this thing. I've got to go on tour next week. Is that okay? He's like, yeah, sweet. Wow. Just do your and out of office and you're good. That that's so you're just about to the dream. I think you're you're very close. Yeah, if I could work from home, oh, I okay, would be yeah. Yeah. peak dream. I'd be in <laughs> joggers all day, just hanging out. But we'll there get there. Go. Yeah, we'll get yeah, there. absolutely. <laughs> any plans of um, any plans of uh, coming up over to the US, US with uh, graphic nature? Yeah, I mean we're 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 good to go whenever. It's just getting the getting the offers. Um, we're we're very much of the band that is because of our size. We're we're never usually the first choice for a support act. Um, so whenever we do get offered something, it's usually about a week's notice. So mm. like the Sea Space Cowboy run that we did earlier in the year was a week, and yeah. that was UK and Europe, and then Cancer Bats was I think twelve days, and we had to wow. be out for three weeks. Wow. And so we've just, we're always prepared to go out on tour because we want it so bad that we just need to be able to go out the drop of a hat. We're very fortunate that we've, you know, managed to save to buy our own van. Um, the rest of the boys are very kind of, especially Jack, very like mechanic brain. So like if anything goes wrong with the van, he knows what to do like while we're on the road. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we're just a very driven band in that sense that, you know, we haven't ever really got these choice chances before. So when they do arise, we need to make sure there are no excuses. We just need to fucking do it. Right. Um, yeah, it doesn't so, yeah. even last in the group chat. It, it's probably like five minutes. Yep, we'll take it. Not even. Oh, so, honestly, um, honestly yeah. yeah. It's like if Pete's literally said to me, like, if anything comes through while I'm in Thailand, just VO me yes. And like, yep. we'll go. We'll do it. Yeah. That's uh, that's actually um, the mindset that back in the days when I was doing the band thing, um we would meet with uh we were at the brink of like signing a deal or not we, we never did but like when we were like at the brink of it um 
a lot of the A&Rs would always say that same thing. It's like, oh, so what would you do if tomorrow we just need you to come in on tour because a band dropped off? Can you go? So we would have the same mindset. Be like, yeah, of course you can. Yeah, you've like we'll it. drop anything we're doing it's, and go. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's halfway inconvenient because a lot of people have full time jobs. Halfway mm-hmm. inconvenient as it is, I mean, that's that's more or less the state of the industry, is what I'm understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of bands will like pull out like last minute because of illness or maybe yeah. they, they actually can't get the time off work themselves but you know there are the the market of music of like you know any genre is so oversaturated with bands and that's not a bad thing it's a good thing that everyone wants to play music like absolutely like that's yeah. the best form of expression especially for me but then in the same time is like everyone's trying to grab for that same position so when you're offered that thing the second you say no, you're not getting that chance again. Right. So exactly. just keep fucking saying yes to everything that you can. That's true. And they'll keep coming your way. It's just, it's a perseverance thing. And it's a, you know, Cancer Bats even said to us on the first day at tour, like, oh, we really wanted like Harriet out or we wanted like someone else out. And we were like, oh, that's cool. And then like, you know, a few days into it and uh, like a week into it, they were like, oh, we're so glad you boys are on it. We're so glad we got to meet you. You're like the best people we've ever toured with and all this shit. And I'm like... This is the thing. When you're given the chance, do it and prove why you should be there. Yeah. Yep. So I couldn't agree with that sentiment more. That's yeah. that's what a lot of people I think listening need to hear. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's a great takeaway for this one, man. That's a great takeaway. Yeah. So your your third inspiration track mm-hmm. uh you sent was Wake Up by Fight Star. Love that um, song. I Hell yeah. For for a while, I I came to Fight Star late myself. Um, you know, yeah. it was really only in the past five years I think someone actually showed them to me. I was like, where has this been? You know, it, mm-hmm. and I'm hooked. Um, what what about Wake Up hooked you? I think it's the it wasn't even the song that got me into them. It it's just it's such an emotional track throughout, and like. I remember I used to skip it. Like whenever I would listen to it when I was younger, it was always like, oh yeah, I don't want to listen to this one because this one's kind of like, it's not got the heavy bits. Like there are other songs, so I didn't want to listen to it. But then I think I just sat on it for ages and then just listened to it. And I was on the train or something whenever. And when the last fucking chorus comes in and you've got all the gang vocals and shit, like that's, that's a goosebumps moment for me because I'm just like, this is such a fucking like pinnacle of what a song can be it goes from being like this like you know it's a decent song and then it just ramps up into this anthem and you're like fuck that it just gets me every time yeah yeah it's phenomenal songwriting they have and such a way with emotion yeah i just want to fucking be charlie simpson i want him on a fucking graphic nature song and i'm gonna make it happen this is a this is a a time stamp date stamp whatever you need to do we're gonna tag him I'll get him this. Got a fest there. We'll yeah. tag him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This specific. Yep. We'll we'll send this out on uh, you know as promo and tag him. There you go. Yeah. It's gonna happen. There you go. Maybe. Manifest. Hey, maybe we could uh we could be of help in uh making uh graphic nature's career a little bit you know more. Oh, dude, could you imagine if that happened? I just feel like that'd be great. Yeah. We've got love a graphic to see nature that. song with Charlie fucking Simpson from. Yeah, I would love to see that for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah, I had, um, and again, I I came to him late, but you know, again, the emotion just captured me. It was "Sync with the Snakes" off their latest album. Oh, it, it's that another album's one. Fucking great. It, I, it, you know, for an entry, I was like, oh, hello, like, yeah, let me listen to more. You know, it, yeah, uh, animals so, from that album is, mm-hmm. or I think it's animal. Yeah. Fucking hell, they're just so good at choruses. I don't understand. Like, it's. I feel like. Yeah, I don't know. It's structured <laughs> in in nestled in just right so that it's yeah. like wait i you know a couple hours after you hear the song you're like wait what why is that still here you know it's yeah. it, it's it's the ear one <laughs> the thing that i really love about fight star and people like never listen to him because they're always like oh isn't that just charlie from busted and i'm like yeah it is charlie from busted the reason he left busted is to do this band like just give it the time of day and then like even my wife she was like oh, i'll never really listen to fight star because like I was a McFly girl and I didn't like busted that much. <laughs> and now she was like, I was listening to fight star all day at work the other day. They're actually really good. 
<laughs> well, I've I'm, got you. <laughs> I'm truly, I'm, I'm halfway. I'm halfway impressed. You got to the marriage stage, and uh, that had not <laughs> happened yet. So, oh, I'm pretty sure I played it on like a second date, and I was like, "How good is this?" And she's like, "Yeah, it's pretty good." Okay. And now it's like, right. "You need to like this for us to remain together." <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's not <laughs> qualifications. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you do not like this, our entire relationship is in jeopardy. Woman, yeah. Yeah. understand this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my um so let's let's get a little bit into the debut album um mm -hmm. obviously i it has not been released as of this this uh podcast however when yeah. this re the podcast releases it will have been out um coming up you said it's dark it's it's emotional um it's every track means something special um yeah do you do you still have within the collective of the album that ferocity Dear and entitled. intensity here for the artists people supporting in, the creators in the singles so far yeah yeah um pretty much every song and we've got a really funny uh review on itunes i think it's our only review from the album no one's heard the album but we've got one review and the, someone's given it one out of five because they said, I liked one of the tracks, but the other one sounded the same. So if, that, if that's anything to go for, then... Okay. You know, right. the, the tracks are heavy. They're still there. <laughs> I don't know why you... All, how in the world does that even happen? Uh, it's not even out. And... I think because, like, you can buy, like, Killing Floor into the dark, bad blood and white noise like, as their own thing. Oh, and I think they bought one of them, and then like you know, you can like preview listen to the rest of them. Yep. I think they were like, oh, this this one's cool. Let me try the others. Oh, they just kind of sound the same, but they there's, don't. There's uh, the killing so, floor to you, they do. fan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, this um, is cool to slash and hack and whatever with, and oh, yeah. this isn't as good. Yeah, there's there's a lot of, um, obviously the heavy heaviness is on there. The, um, kind of. Is diverse the word? Where I've like changed... Oh, dynamics. The dynamics are different for my vocals. Uh, okay. I've tried a lot of new things with it. Um, it's still just as heavy. It, I mean, it's definitely yeah. heavier than the other right. shit that we've released. Um, there are... there. I think the last two tracks, um, A Twin and The Downpour, are our most like out there kind of songs. Like A Twin... This is going to come out, you know... Yeah. after the album's out anyways mm -hmm. so i'm gonna talk about it. the twin is like it's a monologue that i wrote um about my sleep paralysis and it's something that i've suffered with as a kid and i thought it kind of went away for ages and then i started having it again quite recently um like literally the night before we recorded the song Oof. so it, i wow. woke up and was like okay i'm just gonna write what i'm feeling and you know see if that works and yeah, it's different. It's it's like a it's like an instrumental song that just has me kind of speaking over the top of it, well, which I think will will kind of take people off guard a bit. So yeah. I'm excited for that because that's one of the songs that gave me goosebumps because I'm like fucking hell, like this sucks. I hate having it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in hearing that one because man, sleep paralysis. That's some scary shit. Yeah, I've it's been through terrifying. it. I've been through it, and um, sometimes you know, have you? Well, I don't know if this will trigger anything, but like. Uh, there was no, one time no. which I just I just drifted into it more and more and more uh, just to see yeah. what the hell would happen. And all I yeah. heard was a loud bang and woke up and it was like, I don't want to experience that again. Yeah. Which mine is nice. like, it's, it's so fucking scary. So mine for this, the, the, the ones that I used to have as a kid is, is what based this song. That didn't make a fucking sense at all. Sorry. Um, don't worry. <laughs> that song is based off of the sleep paralysis that I had as a kid and it was based on these two things that were in my room at the time that I can't explain correctly how they looked but it was like these weird fucking shadowy figures but they both looked exactly the same so they were twins to me um, but it was the uh. the fear of them being like so close to me and then also the fear of not being able to shout for help from my parents or like being able to escape from like my bed and just being like so consciously aware of what's going on uh it's so fucking scary like I, if you haven't experienced it then 
that's good. That's that's good. I, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's horrible. I, I also think like your senses get so heightened. I think you're, you're aware that. as well. So you you're aware, know. and your senses are so heightened that even yeah. just a droplet of water from the living room will sound like a loud noise. Yeah, you're just it's, so hyper aware. Yeah, I don't know what causes it. I'd really like to look into it. It's just fucking yeah. scary. Very. Our brains are fucking weird, man. Like, oh dude. my gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a whole. I, I, I live with a doctor now, so it's it's like, uh, you know. <laughs> It's a whole different experience to be like, oh yeah. yeah, well this happened. Why? Like the body does that, you know? It's 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 a whole different saga. Yeah, that um, that see. sounds. It, it I mean impressively, just personal but intriguing for you know I'm I'm anxious to hear it. Um, and I, I, I mean to actually to be a closer or you know next to in that that realm i'm i'm excited on the album because i always i do like you know you you go through the the arc of the album and then it whether it just kind of closes on the same energy or it just throws you a curveball it it makes it impactful either way because it's, it can be done yeah, well it's, it's definitely a curveball yes. it's not like you know it's not like out there we're not like yeah. doing crazy things it's just uh it's quite a personal monologue from me that we've We've got drums and I think we played some piano for it. Um, and we've definitely got, oh, we added like loads of effects to my voice and stuff to make it sound really fucking weird and shit. All right. So yeah, I'm excited for people to hear that again. Like, I don't really like playing it for people though. Right. Like, you know, and it's, it's so ingrained in like me into that song. Like, I don't even think my wife said it. Um, cause she was like, Oh, play me the album like front to back. And I was like, yeah, maybe another day. But not today. <laughs> you gotta like Fight Star, but no, nope, not this. Yeah, yeah, not the Graphic Nature album. <laughs> um, I can talk about like, so we have the single coming out. It would have been out now, obviously, with the album. Mm. But the the single that we're we're pushing for now is a song called Headstone. Yes. Um, and that's that's a song that kind of deep dives into depression and you know having these really kind of dark suicidal thoughts. Friday the thirteenth. Uh, all right. Oh yeah, fuck. That's kind of cool. I had to double check. Uh, I just had to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shit. Um, My apologies. Continue. No, 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 not at all. Yeah, it's just uh, it's the the same theme for the album. It's it's every song is about depression. Not every song has the same meaning, but they all have the same underlying tone to it. Apart from Killing Floor, which is the you know the curveball of the album. But right. They're all very heavy, very uh, very open. I think. And I had this. We shot the video for it yesterday. And I had the conversation with our videographer about like making it as dark as it can be without being too triggering for people. Mm. Cause I didn't want it to be like, Oh look, this is cool. I wanted it to be more like, this is how I feel and this is what I go through. So this is how I can like personify it in a video for you. Right. But I never want it to be a fact of like, Hey, yeah. Thinking that you don't want to be here anymore is a really cool thing. Like go and do it. Like, yeah. That's not all I want at all from this band. I just want to, I, I want awareness to be made rather than celebration of the fact kind of right. thing. Um, I'm excited for that song to come out because it's heavy as fuck. So I'm, I'm well excited. <laughs> I, I, I keep hearing the, it's heavy, it's heavy, it's heavy. I'm, yeah. so, I'm so excited for new <laughs> I mean, because I love graphic nature because it's heavy. They're heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do have we do have one song um the downpour which is the other one that i was talking about which is the one that's not a curveball but it is it's a softer heavy which okay. it's it has such a heavy intro and then we have a like a a quite a i don't want to say post hardcore chorus but it's quite a I, I don't know it's not a GN chorus in the sense of like how a GN chorus normally is. It's it's our let's try something and it worked and we're really fucking proud of it. But it could be the song that people are like, mm, I don't know. But yeah, yeah. Hey, you know that that causes chatter. And in today's day yeah. and age, I mean, more by, chatter it, by no that. means it's not like a Pierce the Veil fucking you know high singing chorus. It's just like a chorus that we've never done before. I I can't even. I don't All know right. if I could imagine <laughs> yeah. you singing like Vic. I, no, there's there's no singing. It's it's more of like a shouty sing type yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Like Parkway yeah. Drivey. Oh, they would yeah. do that. Yeah, 
Who knows, man? It might not even be anything to what I'm describing it to, and you guys are like, no, it was still heavy as fuck. What are you on about? Yeah. Yeah, we'll I mean, listen to it, and then we'll edit this podcast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nah, that guy's full of shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, dude, it, this has been so much fun. I, I yeah, man. seriously always love talking to you and the guys. Um, it, you're just, you know, you've supported Deer Untitled, and it's always a, a pleasure to help try and support you back. Um, yeah, absolutely. In any way we can. Um, and then I know Javi's excited because, you know, I, I, he, I don't shut up about you guys. Like there's certain no, bands no. that I just <laughs> like the, the group chat is like, Oh, graphic nature doing, Oh, they're doing this. Here's another track. And, uh, you know, <laughs> he's like, Oh, I got to meet him. All right. And you know, yeah, we, we've yeah, had I'd, a lot I'd, of fun. I want to come to the States so bad. Oh, please do. Um, just to tour. Cause like the UK is fine, but you know, I feel like the US needs a bit of GN out there. Yes, yeah, yeah. You're not, you know, not a lot of people know about us, but you know, if we play enough shows and post enough content, maybe they will. So, top city, top countries are the United States, number one. Number two is the UK. Number three, Germany, Australia, I Canada. Feeling. I had a yeah. feeling your your sound is very palatable to the US market. And you're bang on. Chicago is the the city. Ah, <laughs> like Chi Town. Chi Town. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, like Dallas, Philadelphia, Minneapolis. Oh uh, well, you know Philadelphia's dropping because I moved. So that's uh, <laughs> maybe they're just trying to keep it alive. Yeah. There you go. Like, oh, Nick really liked Graphic Nature, so we have to listen to this. Absolutely. Like... Yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> I'm gonna be the come to Brazil crowd, but the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> I love that it's like oh come to, like I think when horror posted the tour poster for our tour and they were like it's hardly a UK tour it's like yeah but we're touring in the UK it's not we're playing every fucking city in the entire fucking UK oh my gosh we're playing some of the main ones and you know if you've got a two-hour train drive and you want to come and see a band you can do that you know like it's, right. it's okay to travel to see a band oh I've made bigger drives to see bands yeah this is what I mean so again thank you thank you so much um i'll grab one of these thank yous here um for being on yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so good uh and uh we are looking forward to you know obviously hearing the album everyone go spin a mind waiting to die uh and everything else of graphic nature is where can people find you best on socials i'll have all your links in this description but it's typically what graphic nature 404 Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, best socials is Instagram. Okay. We find that's that's where we interact more with people. Or you can join the Discord. Yes. Um, we always post links to it every week or so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's unhinged. Everyone is really horrible to each other, but in a controlled manner. It's true. So it's great. Yeah, I am part of that, and it's yeah. it's rowdy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you come out swinging about what it what's spread on. Uh, you know what's spread oh, or uh, what was the other question it was do you put spread on spread like do you do you put yes. butter and then the teller on the top <laughs> yeah 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 uh, it, it gets wicked in there so no single spread that's it you don't spread on spread <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's like a whole fucking thing that went on for hours <laughs> it did it did, it did. I, yeah, I apologize i sidetracked us again yeah. but this is how much Sorry. we have no you're good um so thank you everyone and uh we'll catch you next time on dear untitled radio Woo!